Well, it's Friday morning. I haven't really got a whole lot of sleep last night, but day one of Hemp Fest, and uh, I'm here to go get me some coffee. Take a look at this. We have some snacks. We have cookies, donuts. We got coffee, hot water, tea, all thanks to Chef Jeremy Cooper and his crew. And there's the man himself. Fixing glasses. <laughs> uh, a man of many talents. All right, so it's time for me to get my coffee. And then um, I got about an hour to kill to go get my hair cut. And then I got to get prepped for my speech. There you go. There's a pair of restored glasses. So, yeah, yeah, this is going to be uh, it's gonna be a long but really fun day. Make sure you go five minutes an hour. And I'm so glad to see you. Good to see you. And I want you oh, to sorry, meet. I want you to. This is Cypher. You must meet when you get a chance. And she trained up yesterday to take over at Vendercom. Um, sure, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I can deal with it. Oh, go ahead and sit down. I'm 100 okay with it. Yeah, I'll move this out of the way too, so you can. Happy to see you. Oh, I'm glad to keep my eye on the clock. Look how beautiful it is behind these two. But yeah, I uh, went all the way up to the point. That's a lovely hat. Finally, I get to meet you in person. Finally. Oh, it's wonderful. She's okay, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Hi. Allison, again, give me a hug. Hey. More hugs, more hugs. Renee's in the... Brother Jason. Seth, this is my brother Jason. Jason oh, hi, Jason. Seth he walked from San Diego. What? Yeah, it's my third journey. Third time. Oh, you're that guy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the guy I did the article about. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey. I walk a lot myself. Um, I'm actually going to be speaking on stage at 1235 at main stage today. So if you guys are able to get down there, that would be really awesome. Oh, yeah. That, that's, it's on my agenda. Right on, right <laughs> on. All right. Well, I'm going to hang out with my friends. I have to go over to the speaker booth and find out what time I'm speaking tomorrow or if I'm speaking Sunday or how that all is going down. They've had some uh, new arra rearrangements or something. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, time for me to... Uh, yeah, continue on with the day. It's been a long day and it's not even started yet. <laughs> well, I went and I looked and uh, yeah, my, the time for me tomorrow to speak hasn't changed. It's freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Um, and then Sunday, I don't have to speak. I don't really like have to work, it feels like. All right. Uh, let's get the day one here started. They're about ready to start letting people yeah, in. Change anything. And uh, they're doing sound cool, checks here at the symposium. They have some really awesome panels in here. Uh, they're getting ready to do a press conference. Talk about, you know, the theme of this year's Seattle Hemp Fest, which is about the fact that we have prisoners, we have people in prison for cannabis, and we have our government, we have corporations making a huge profit while they are still in prison for the same damn thing. Um, yeah, it's time to bring our, our uh, prisoners of cannabis, of this bullshit cannabis war, this bullshit drug war, it's time to bring them home. Um, anytime that they can sit there and make money on it, the corporations, they make the money, our, our, there should be nobody in prison for cannabis. Nobody should be in prison for a, pl for a plant. Nobody. All right, I'm stumbling over my words. I'm, uh, it, it's just my body's killing. I hardly got any sleep last night, and I actually have to go speak here in about an hour. So, yeah, we're gonna see how this day is gonna go. Um, but it's gonna be awesome, it really is. I've got so many people here to see and meet up with, and tons and tons of love and hugs to get. And we got little tree branches falling on me here. Well, no, uh, almost falling on me. 
That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I've actually woken up to tree branches falling on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, widowmakers. That's what they're called. All right, it's time for me to um, figure out what I'm doing now and smoke some more weed and ease the body up. Good. Good. Are we on candy camera? Yes. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> so, hi everybody. This is Seth, Chef Sage. Thank you. Chef Sage. Ah. Try to say that five times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I see Chef Sage stuffing up blueberry muffins and zucchini. Ah, oh, yeah. So check that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at those. Awesome. So, thank you. Yeah. Mm. You have to come find me. 315 CD Blackstage, my friend. Where are you speaking today? At 1235. All right, my friend. All right, hey, Enjoy. much love. Yeah, much love. Enjoy. Get some food. Definitely. I've heard about your story, man. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really awesome. I'm filming, I'm filming my journey even as we speak. Awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome to Hepfax. Thank you, thank you. I the following year after that, I came to talk to you about safe, affordable access and how they were trying to merge the medical marketplace into 502 and how patients were afraid that they were going to lose access. You see, this was something brought up when we had this great 502 debate back in 2012, but I didn't really think that patients would actually lose access to their medicine when it became legal, but that's exactly what happened. And the following year after that, I came to talk about how even when we lost access to medical marijuana, we were able to still break ground by adding PTSD as a qualifying condition to our law, and by being the first state in the nation to fully decriminalize a cannabis product from the State Controlled Substances Act. That was the Cannabis Health and Beauty Aids products. And now we've seen on the federal level, hemp decriminalized, pulled completely from the Controlled Substances Act. That started here with the model of Cannabis Health and Beauty Aids in Washington State. And every year, I tell you about how we're still fighting for civil rights. How people are still criminals. Their records haven't been expunged. You look at me and you think, she can't be a criminal, right? Well, I've been busted for pot. That's how I got started in this movement. And until I'm no longer having to mark a box on a form saying I'm a criminal, it's not really legal, right? And we know that there are still those prop prisoners out there. Luke Scarmazzo is serving a 20-year sentence for state legal medical marijuana. Aaron Sandusky is serving a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence. Jerry Duvall serving a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence. Jerry Duvall is a dual organ transplant recipient who is growing marijuana for himself and is still locked up in federal prison serving time for this plant while this industry flourishes around you. And where do you see these folks talking about that? People are losing their jobs, they're losing their housing, they're still being denied student loans because of cannabis. Just yesterday in Oregon, a mother turned herself into the jail, charged with criminal neglect for feeding her child CBD oil for her cancer. Her child has been stripped from her and put into foster care in Oregon, where you can walk into a store and buy it off the street. This mother just surrendered herself to jail yesterday and was put through the court system. And there's mothers like me. I'm a medical cannabis patient myself. I need this to be able to be healthy and function as much as I do. The alternatives for me are handfuls of pharmaceuticals that don't work and make me very sick. And imagine what that's like when you're a pregnant woman and your choice is continue using the medicine you know that works or switch to pharmaceuticals that you know are gonna poison your baby, or stop using it altogether and hope that you can survive. This is reality for people in this country still to this day. And even once I gave birth to my child having used cannabis, then I had to fight to be able to have the right to breastfeed my child because they wanted to stop me from being able to do that because of the cannabinoids in my system. Even though all of the medical experts have said that is the best course for me. I had the National Perinatal Association and the National Advocates for Pregnant Women stand up for me, and yet still the hospitals tried to deny me the right to breastfeed my son. 
And we have medical refugees who still are moving to states where it's legal so that they can have access, because there's three states left without any medical marijuana whatsoever. Idaho, Nebraska, and Kansas. They're the last three holdouts. We need to help our brothers and sisters in Idaho, Nebraska, and Kansas, because until they have access, it's not legal anywhere else. I am so proud to see this industry blossoming the way that it has. But I want to see these folks step up with their time and their pocketbooks and stop worrying about regulation and start worrying about people who are losing their children and losing their homes and going to prison and dying there, frankly. It's time to do something different. So, for those of you who don't know, that is LV Musica. <laughs> the government gives her, I believe, 300 joints, 300 pre rolled joints in a tin every single month because it's medicine. She was part of the federal marijuana program that it started in like the late 70s, early 80s. She got into it for her glaucoma. And then in the early 90s, Bush got rid of the federal marijuana program. Fortunately, those there were 13 people still alive who still had, were part of the program. So they were grandfathered in. And they will continue till the day they die to get those joints. It is now 2019, LV is still around, and the government is still providing her every month 300 joints. Do not let your government tell you that it's a drug. Don't let the government tell you that it's not medicine. They're giving it to her every single month. And I thank her because with her, it makes it easier for me to stand up and say, it's fucking medicine, where's mine? And we all should have. All right, time for me to continue on. So guys, I gotta tell you, these are really freaking awesome. And they've got, they glow in the dark, guys. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we got selected ones that glow in the dark. The company likes to do limited edition ones so they can be collectible. Oh, right on. Custom print logos on there. The Rick and Morty at Pickle Rick are very, very popular. I don't know if you've seen these in high times. Joker Poker, you're smoking. You need to chop your bowl. You squish your bowl. Tape it out. Oh yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I use these um, and was gifted one yesterday um, by the guy. Because this, I put it in my pocket. Here, let me, I think I got mine. I have it. Yeah, I put it in my pocket and when I pull it out at night, it glows. I can find my lighter like that so I'm in the middle of the woods and I'm not trying to alert the bears or the rangers or I'm on the side of the road hidden behind some bushes. I'm not trying to alert the cops where I am. Um, this allows me to continue my adventure. It's one of the, it's anything glow in the dark is definitely key. All right, thanks, uh, thanks for oh, good, huh? Daisy? Daisy. Ah, Is that you... my set? Awesome. Awesome. We made a little she shed back over here for us to sit down in. Oh, right. Now a little smoking parlor and everything. It's all video, right? Video? Video. Yep, you're good. Video. Uh, that's all good. That's all good. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> well, welcome. Hey, thank you. So glad you're here.
on, on behalf of the family, we uh, give thanks once again. Have a good weekend. Happy Hemp Fest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday evening to close it down in a good way, too. So we raise our hands to the people behind this whole festival. We give thanks for this. This is awesome. Over here. One more time for the Sacred Water Canoe family, huh? That's how you get it going. Thank you. This is the 28th Annual Seattle Hemp Fest. What's up? Woo! Everybody out here, upscale casual and shit. Looking good. Looking good. Uh, it wouldn't be a protestable if you didn't have some speakers. So we got a couple speakers out here. We're going to bring up our first one of the day. He walked up here. From California, all the way from California, well, on foot. You can follow him on YouTube. Uh, this is his third year walking up to the Seattle Hip Fest. Make some noise, show your love and appreciation for Seth Cunningham. Yeah! Hi, my name is Seth Cunningham, and I walked here from, from San Diego today. Yes, walked. I've been walking for... 195 days, 1,064 miles, because I've done this journey before and it's been simply amazing. And this time around I decided to film it for my own YouTube series, Walking to Seattle Hemp Fest, which I have 53 episodes posted so far. So my message went from screw your hurdles and live your dreams, to don't let the hate out there make you so afraid that you dim your light, because right now, we need you guys to shine brighter than ever before. The quickest way to defeat the dark is to turn on the light. So shine on, be fearless, choose love, and screw hate. That is why I've walked over 5,500 miles, and I will continue to walk this globe, spreading this message of peace and love. You can find me on Instagram. Find me on Facebook, where I post my real-time posts. Find me on YouTube where I'm posting my episodes. I wanted to become the Dodger version of Anthony Bourdain, so I am. Much love and much peace, you all. We love you, Seth Cunningham, one more time. Inspirational. Cannabis inspirational. It's beautiful. And one last thing. I'm wearing this shirt that I don't really talk about a whole lot. It's free last floor. None of us are free until all of our pop prisoners are free. Amen. 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 There you go. Seth Cunningham, one more time. Yes, indeed. Here. I'm just going to read uh, this whole thing. So here we go. Here we go. Hip Fest is facing possible extinctions, and this time it is not a lot of fun. So we blink. But the business trying to kill, kill Hip Fest is worth. I tell it different. Yep, that works. 75 year old man is walking through the woods and he sees a frog. The frog says, If you give me a kiss, I'll turn into a 19 year old princess. You can live in my castle. I'll take care of you every desire. So the man takes a frog uh, and he puts it in his pocket and he yep, continues to walk through the woods. After a while, the frog says, Hey, aren't you going to give me a kiss? The old man. So I'm getting a shirt today um, from Hempfest because it's got my name on the back. So this is the shirt and on the back we got right there. So I'm going to get this shirt signed up by everybody who works here. Um, all, the, all the people who have been following me for over the last year, last couple years now. We got the Free the Prisoners booth over here, guys. This is Tracy Floor Pike. And this is Lance's mom. And uh, let's, let us check out this booth of yours. We're all the people that we help free. Okay. So we'll start from this side. Oh, wow. And those guys are just, most of these people are still in. So we have, uh, this letter is just for everybody, you know, to go to the president. That's one thing I got in. Okay. The letter over here, the green letter, is just for Lance. Okay. Um, yeah, we have stickers and buttons. Awesome. 
Different, different bunks for everybody. Yes, that's awesome. That's really cool. Really awesome. Uh, there's a raffle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Sweet. Very fun. I follow you on Facebook. I'm Danielle Mugley. I was on a panel with you, I think, last year. Yes, yes, as a matter of fact. Yes, yes. Welcome to our booth. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, welcome back. Welcome home. <laughs> yes, yes. This is so cool. I was literally just thinking of you, and I turned around, and you are right there. Oh, my God. And I want more free I want all the free hugs I can get. Free hugs. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, happy uh, anniversary. Most definite. Oh, I'm doing so awesome. So I'm on my way to go get a shower here, thanks to one of my favorite angels, I'm at the Edgewater. So this is what's in the elevator, guys. It's housekeeping. 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 Come in, housekeeping. Hey. You let me fluff your pillow? <laughs> oh my you god. Pillow, now this <laughs> is a place. Did you guys see that elevator? Yeah. I opened it opened up and I was like, whoa. <laughs> that's a trip. <laughs> What's this view look yeah, like? No water view this time, but Oh, uh, but that's cool. The uh, the elevator was made up for the no water view. <laughs> I know, right? It was like a free trip like, on the way up here. Yeah. A trip on your way to your next floor. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I was like, whoa, this is really intense. If you guys don't recognize this guy by face, you will definitely recognize this guy by name. <laughs> this guy is one of the coolest individuals that I get to run into in my Canada family when I travel around and we go to all these awesome events. I'm fighting for your rights, basically. Um, he is the senior cultivation. Um, Cultivation editor for High Times Magazine. Sorry, my face was falling up. <laughs> Author of Cannabis, The Beginner's Guide to Growing MJ. He's got over 20 decades in the cannabis industry. And he literally, you guys, High Times wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for this guy. Because he is so cool and he has a lot of cool stuff to tell you. Danny Danko. People say, why are we still uh, fighting for cannabis rights? Uh, there's a lot of fighting still to go on. There's still people in prison today for cannabis, nonviolent marijuana offenses that we need to get out. Uh, there's still social use. We want to be able to gather together, get together, and consume cannabis in places where people, uh, just like people consume alcohol or anything else, where we can all have our social use and grow your own. You know, we want to be able to grow our own. And so this, this is not part of the law yet, and it's not, cannabis, the flower isn't free until these things happen. We need to be able to ensure that our veterans have access to cannabis, that people, working people, people with post-traumatic stress that work as first responders and fire, fire people, firemen and women. Uh, so it's very important that, uh, and seniors as well, seniors need to have access to cannabis, okay? But most importantly is getting the prisoners out of jail. And that's the theme of this hemp fest is this the war on this flower isn't over until we get those people out and if you care about that and you want to make sure that happens then what you need to do is join the cannabis voter project you can text canna voter to 40649 
to tell your legislators how you feel. And that doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, Green Party, whatever you, however you feel, if you support this plan, you can tell your legislators you feel that way across all party lines, completely nonpartisan. Text can a voter to 40649 to tell your legislators not only that you it's an important issue to you, but that you vote and that you will get rid of them if they don't support the issues that you support. The fight is not over and I'm going to say give it up for High Times, Dope Magazine, Seattle Hemp Fest, the amazing crew that puts this all together. They build this entire city for us, for us to peruse for free. And so because you're perusing it for free, please donate. Please get, put some money in the bucket if you see the bucket for donations. Please support these businesses. Uh, please boycott Expedia and let them know how you feel about them shutting down this whole entryway back here and making it far more difficult because I've used Expedia to come to this festival and spent my own money with them and I never will again if they don't fix that. So let them know, sign the petition, send them an email, legalize cannabis for all people and celebrate your freedom and keep on fighting. Thank you. Listen up, these guys really have knowledge and love to share with you. It's, uh, it really is about education and love. Uh, okay. uh, uh, how you been? Uh, how you been? Yeah, I'm still working. I'm working again now that I'm...